Today we are looking at a life-size custom bust of Robert Patrick as portrayed as T-1000 in Terminator 2, which is arguably one of the greatest movies for its time of all time. Did you get that? So Terminator 2 was such an amazing flick for so many different reasons. One, it had groundbreaking CGI effects at the time. Two, it's a James Cameron film. He rarely misses. Three, it was a sequel to an amazing movie that was groundbreaking in my opinion. I love Terminator 1. Four, it brought one of the most badass female leads we've seen since Ripley in Aliens in the form of Sarah Connor. And five, it gave us all the Arnie great one-liners. Hasta la vista, baby. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Welcome to the Extreme channel. First, before we start off, I want to let you know, because he is frozen, the lights are playing hell on this. So wait till the close-up video of the paint and sculpt during the review, because I know it looks weird with the lights, but I can't do anything about it. I've tried a few different settings. But, cause, but we're going to review this custom T-1000 piece. The reason we're reviewing it, I'm going to sell it at the end of this month. So if you're interested, don't message me. Just make sure you've not only liked the video, but you've subscribed to the channel and hit that bell notification so you know when that video launches. I'm selling him, a whole bunch of other busts, transformers, a lot of cool stuff. But today we're going to review him before we let him go, and I really like him. I'm just getting rid of him because I'm getting rid of all my life-size busts other than a select few DC pieces. But this was commissioned by a custom commissioner and they made 50 of these. We'll talk more about that in value. But I quite like it. It's simple, it has a lot of cool things on it, and it's a neat effect from one of the coolest parts of the movie. As I said, Terminator 2, I remember it vividly because my parents still took me to it despite the fact that I was well under 17. They also took me to a lot of other shows that were rated R and let me watch horror movies, which is probably like I the reason I fucking am the way I am today. But I don't regret it. As I said, I still love Terminator 2. Also, a constant contention in the category of was the sequel better than the original? T2 often falls into that, and it brought us the T1000. Now, I can't even pronounce the proper technical term, and I'm surprised that Arnold Schwarzenegger could, but he is made of liquid metal, so he can adjust his body to however he sees fit, whether he wants to mimic another human being or an object of equal size, and he creates knives and stabbing weapons. And he was played by Robert Patrick, which was kind of his breakout role. What was really cool about the movie, what I enjoyed, is you didn't know until they were in the mall scene who was the good guy and who was the bad guy. The first time I saw it, we all assumed that he was actually the good guy. Reason for that, he entered the same way that Kyle Reese did in the first movie, and he kind of mimicked all those movements. And they played kind of the evil music when the Terminator, and he was actually very pleasant when he was dealing with people. It wasn't until that last second when Arnold said, Get down. That we actually knew he was the bad guy, so that was crazy to me. I miss the days before there was so much information on the internet, and we could actually have real spoilers like that. But here's one more spoiler. This is an amazing piece. Let's start reviewing it. Now, even though it's a bust, it's simplistic, but there's still a lot of cool stuff. So we're gonna use the traditional categories, starting with the concept of this piece. Now down at the base, it looks like the base is actually made out of liquid metal, both on the bottom round part and then the sides and the back. Now, while I normally don't like it when they cut a base off on the sides and the back, here I think it fits okay because of the type of character that he is. As you move up, you have ice crystals everywhere. So he has his policeman jacket, because remember, he was actually flying a helicopter, and before that, he was riding a motorcycle. And it looks like a real jacket that's been frozen. That is pretty damn cool. His badge is actually accurate to the movie as well. And as you move up, this is fully sculpted. It's crazy, because it looks like they took a real jacket and shoved it in the freezer. When you're looking at the zipper of the jacket, when you're looking at the clothes underneath, then as you move up to his face, his skin. His skin is completely sculpted. 
but there is a buildup of the skin and ice on top of it with his motorcycle helmet with that exact same effect. This thing actually looks cold if you want to touch it. Now his mouth is wide open as it was in the screen when he froze and he doesn't have any teeth which is kind of weird but that's the way it was in the movie. His sunglasses are removable. We're going to take a look at that later, but of course for movie accuracy he had them on. And then of course the exact same helmet he had in the movie, so they replicated that. And I think this is a phenomenal bus. It almost makes me not want to sell it, honestly, but we need the space and I am semi-retiring. So we're going to do that and we're also going to give the concept a 5 out of 5. I am actually really impressed. Now there's a similar concept for this that was done years and years ago. Very, very similar. It was actually by someone who just made Terminator and T-1000 pieces who has passed away for a number of years now. And his pieces go for like three or $4,000, but they are much better than this one. But let's talk about design. So honestly, there, there's not much to it. What you see is what you get. I'm not gonna do an unboxing and assembly because frankly, it's just taking it out of the box. Now, I am going to measure him. The widest part at the shoulders is about 18 inches. The base has about a 11 and a half inch diameter, so very displayable. Now, he does look a little bit bigger than me. That's because he has moved forward, but he is life size. His face and mine are about the same, and it's 27 inches tall. So here's an up close picture with his sunglasses on. And then here's a picture with his eyes. So they still have eyes as well in case you want to display that. Really, that's it. Now, it's not too complicated, so I don't want to give him a 5 out of 5, but I give the design a 4 out of 5. The really difficult category is paint and sculpt because, well, I think the likeness is there, and I think that definitely goes into the sculpt. It's kind of hard to tell because it's frozen like this. So I think this is not difficult to do, but it's probably still gonna receive a high score because it does what you need it to do. Did you get all that? Again, the lighting's kind of screwing this up, but I love starting at the base. I love the intermix of metallic colors. Like I said, it almost makes it feel like it's a, alive and moving and the ripple effect they gave it on the side. Kind of a cool base considering he is made out of metal. It almost looks like he's rising from the metal, even though in this scene he was frozen and that's on all the sides and the back. And look at the close-ups of this jacket. The pockets down here that are semi-cut off. The zipper I was talking about and the shirt underneath. Really looks like it's frozen. Almost looks like you would, uh, it would be cold if you touched it. The straps on his shoulders, some buttons there that are frozen over. Here's his badge. I really like the uh, effect they gave. Looks like a, they stuck a jacket in a freezer and put it on him. Now his skin to me is a little bit too light. It should have been a little bit darker, but the ice effect still would have looked great. So you have that crystalline ice effect all over. I don't know how they did that because it looks like ice and it doesn't really flake off. I'm sure if you rubbed it enough, it would. There's definitely a joke in there. But uh, the inside of his mouth again, that's what it looked like in the movie. Some of this layering of the um, ice on top of his skin looks a little weird but nothing I can't get over I even like the ice effect on the sunglasses now the helmet has that same aspect as well and on this I believe this is a real helmet I'm fairly certain it is and they just glued it on it doesn't come off so I think they just added the ice effect up there as well and it's caked on a little more in other areas which is probably how it would be because it was pretty uh, it was spraying on him pretty inconsistent but i think the likeness is definitely there for this scene that definitely looks like robert patrick and i said like i said i don't think it's that hard to sculpt the likeness because he was more of a mannequin than he was a uh, man or at least he appeared to be so pretty cool a lot of neat stuff going on here Paint, again, everything's kind of shrouded over with the ice. I think, as I said, the skin could have been a little bit better, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give the paint a four out of five on this. I'm really impressed. Sculpt, I like the jacket and the ice effect a lot better than I like the face, but I'm going to still go ahead and give it an overall four out of five. Now value on this piece. So they retailed for a thousand. It took like three or four years to make this, which was annoying but obviously it was worth it in the end. They only made 50, and this is actually number one of 50. 
And then shipping was another couple hundred dollars. So you're about twelve, thirteen hundred all in. I'll probably be selling it right around that price point with free shipping. But I think it's pretty cool. You know, Queen Studios has this bust of Robert Patrick, but I always thought the likeness was slightly off. I think the likeness on this one's a little bit better. Granted, it's probably an easier scene to create a resemblance, but you know, nowadays busts are going for three or four thousand dollars. So I think that this one, you know, around thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred, whatever, I think that's a good deal. So I think the value is a four out of five on this. Definitely a nice piece, and I think you get what you paid for. Now, does it have the X factor? Is it a five out of five statue? It's not. You know, I always say though, the danger of doing these reviews is I don't want to get rid of the statue. And that's definitely the case here. I don't want to get rid of him now, um, but I'm going to. But I still think he's a four out of five. He's above average. He's done really well for what he is. I am impressed with this piece. Now, what do you think guys? Would you rather have this one or the Queen Studios? Now, keep in mind, you pay a lot more for the Queen Studios. Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment, and also you could win a statue. We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones, at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Thanks for tuning in, I really appreciate it. I mean that every single time. Please hit that like button, it helps me, it's easy and free for you. And then check out some of these other videos. Subscribe too.